So between the two of us, we've got quite the collection of yarns. And Where are you from? Um, I live in Sanford, and I've been spinning for about nine years now, going on ten. And everything that I'm working with here is my own hand spun yarn. Okay. So, um, and is it very yeah. um, I just do it for pleasure. Um, I like to make my own fabrics, my own bags. I make um, things like ponchos, um, vests, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bag that I made recently for a new drop spindle that I have. Beautiful. And what I'm working on right now, this fabric is going to be for a bags for a new spinning wheel that I have because I like to make protective bags for everything. And I'm doing it in stripes, but they're going to have gradients in them. If you notice here that I have two different colors of yarn mm -hmm. on the warp. So what it's going to do is it's going to allow the stripes to have a flow to them. They're going to have different gradients running through them. Yeah. And I'm using different textures of yarn. This is a heavier, thicker yarn. It's probably like a, a, wool, um, a woolen size. And then this is finer, more like a sport weight yarn. But, um, and as a matter of fact, I think this yarn that I'm making using right here originally came from an island off the coast of Maine, from wool, from sheep. And the story on that island, it's called Na Nash Island. Uh, uh, back uh, many, many years ago, a young lady moved there with her family, and they were lighthouse tenders. Mm -hmm. And she got a, a flock of sheep, started caring for the sheep, and she died at, I think, 91 or 92, and her sheep are still there on the island, still there on the island. So a group of people go out yearly and tend to the sheep. They herd them up, do a health check on them, separate the rams off on, and they take them off on lobster boats uh, to other islands. And then they um, will shear the sheep, and the best yarn is sold off to hand spinners. So it's really neat. It's a neat story. Yeah, you can find the story, you know, on online about Nash Island. The sheep out here are definitely like wild animals that don't take a lot of tending. They live on their own, they eat a lot of kelp off the shore, grass year-round. Even, even in the winter time there'll be grass at the base of all the knolls out here that they can eat. They get all the water they need just from what they're grazing off the grass and stuff. There is a freshwater pond on the island but they never they never touch it. No predators except for the black back gulls during the lambing time. What we do is to come out and make sure they're okay so we come out and check on them all the time. But really they don't need a whole lot of intervention from us. Jenny grew up on Little Nash, her father was a lighthouse keeper. She had the flock since she was 10 years old. She had them for over 80 years. She died just shy of 92. We used to come out and help Jenny when she would do the shearing and lambing. And then uh, after she died, we took over the flock and kept it going just, just like it's been. We'll come out, come out with the girls and we'll stay out here for the month while the, while the lambs come. When we're lambing is we're constantly going around looking for any lambs. Sometimes there'll be one that's uh, lost from its mother and you got to try to get them back. This one was um, weak so the mother probably just abandoned it. It's hard when one doesn't make it. That's probably the hardest part. Something that we just love doing so it's it's not hard but it's it's a lot of back and forth you know hauling stuff up and down the beach and going around multiple times a day checking the flock and then bringing in ones like this and trying to get them back going again. For me it's um, is, is doing it with my family. And when they go away to school they, they kind of realize that this is um, you know, a pretty unique thing that we do and it just is uh, pretty amazing to see your kids starting to attend the flock. <laughs> Okay. And 
And uh, so people like myself that are hand spinners, we help to support that flock of sheep by purchasing right. the fleece from them and then processing it. Now when you get the fleece, is it all cleaned and ready to nope. do something or it's, do you have to do stuff with it's it? It's raw fleece. Yep. This is fleece that has been washed. This is actually Romney fleece, which is this exact yarn here. And so it will come as raw fleece, and the, we do something what we call scouring. And that is actually washing it. And then we have to either comb it or card it to turn it into a roving, um, such as. Yeah, I did this. Braiding is hard on the hands. Okay. This would be called roving, what I'm using in the drop spindles. It would be something that's nice and smooth that we can spin from. So we do all the work um, either with hand cards or carters or combs. And then we spin it through our wheels and weave it or knit it. So this is pretty labor intensive as far as the amount of work. It can be, but it. it's a joy because you have creative control. So as a matter of fact, this very fleece here, this very curly one, yep. that's the yarn that it makes. Hold on a second, let me get it to zoom in. Oh yeah. So you can see how different it becomes. It yeah. yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Is uh, it, it just gives you this wonderful creative possibility, and it's all in how you manipulate the fleece and you know the weaving. You know, even the spinning, how you spin it. Uh, if you notice that this shuttle is much chunkier, and the yarns in these two shuttles is finer. It's all how it's been spun, and on what machine it's been spun, at what speed it's been spun. There's quite a bit to it. There is quite a bit to it. Spinning and weaving is a journey that you could probably live your whole life and still learn something every day. Awesome. And that's that's how I I feel about it, and that's what keeps it exciting though too. Yeah. So, and each yarn has its own you know like sheen to it. Um, you can see how shiny this fleece is, and this has different tones to it. Makes it really fun. Okay. Do you only do wool, or do you do oh. other? No, I do alpaca. Um, I've done llama. Um, as a matter of fact, in this bag here, that eggplant color is alpaca. Okay. And um, oh, let's see. I've I've spun yak. Um, oh my gosh, silk. Um, I think there's some silk blended into this. Uh, oh gosh, there's many many fibers. Angora bunny, uh, mohair uh, goat. Um, Pretty much any and fiber cute. and bast fibers, which is plant fibers too. Oh, okay. Um, I'm actually currently growing hemp. Okay. Um, at um, uh, so we're going to be doing. Oh wait a minute, hemp. What am I thinking? Flax. Flax. Sorry, that's the other one. <laughs> but right. flax, and uh, we're going to be um, pulling that up shortly and then redding it and then processing it into linen fiber. So, yeah. It's really interesting and as a matter of fact um, this fiber here is wool and bamboo blended together. So bamboo is another yeah that's another plant-based fiber that you can use. Now, are you part of a spinning group or a group of people that get yeah, together? Yeah, we do have that? a couple of guilds. Um, there's the the one that's located at the Wentworth House in Rollinsford. I'm Julia Roberts. I'm the president of the Association for Rollinsford Culture and History, ARCH for short. And we are standing in front of the Colonel Paul Wentworth House, which is uh, maintained by ARCH as an educational and cultural center for Rollinsford and the surrounding community.
And then uh, there's the uh, Southern New Hampshire Guild. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's actually a um, Spinners and Dyers Guild is what it's called. And because a lot of us do our own dyeing too, okay. so we can Call customize right. everything to our liking. Okay. And, and do you use typical dyes for this or do you um, use specific dyes? There are acid dyes, specific acid dyes that um, we use for wool, silk. It depends on what the fiber is that you're okay. you are um, dyeing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's different dyes for different types of fibers. Nice. Well, thank you for that information. The sky's the limit. With uh, this. Yep. Yep. So that kind of nice feel, and then here's my. I can show you guys. So. Nope, that was good. <laughs> so the key is to take it from the fluffy to make it into yarn, we need to make it spin. So we have a variety of ways to do that. So I have a spinning wheel, but before that, they would have used something like this. This is a spindle. So let's see if I can get this one started. And I'm going to pass oh, over the locks so they can see them. That's this what it is, starts like. This is the locks right directly off the sheet that have been washed. Mm -hmm. So that's what they'll start out looking like. And then you turn it into roving like that, and then she spins it. So, so if you want to try it, have you ever spun like a top? The, yeah. Those toys, right? Yeah. So give it a spin. I'm gonna go ah. that way. So, all right. So what that does is it starts putting the wind up in here, and so you spin it again. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. That was a great spin. And so then you can see it's twisting up, and if I let go, twist right up, just like a yarn. You want to try? Yeah. So we're gonna spin it that way. Yeah, perfect. I'll try again. Or you can do. Well, so now you're going to go the other way. That's will unwind it. So it's kind of like winding up the yarn and whoop, winds it up again. Whoa. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm Lori Troutman. I'm from North Carolina. New school oh, okay. And Evie Woodsmith. I'm currently from Newfields, New Hampshire. And how long have you been spinning, each of you? Almost a year. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> what kind of things do you make out of your yarn? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I knit a lot. Yeah, <laughs> lots of knitting. I crochet. Do you? Excellent. Oh, there we go. So you could use. The yarn. Learned how to a few, um, a few weeks ago. Excellent. So then, what you end up with is what you. Said. Um, I've only just started, so I haven't made anything with my own yarn yet. But I'll probably knit with most of it. Okay. Um, All right. For right now, it's just my way to relax and make something pretty. <laughs> Very good. A lot of it is, as Beva was saying, about the process not about the final product because yeah. right? you can go to Walmart and buy yarn. Yep. This is relaxing, it's um, very therapeutic, um, it g gives you something to do while TV is on. So it's, um, okay. it's, it's wonderful to learn.